Hi, Hwami students, this is Coach Marcus, and welcome back to another ECCA session. Time flies, this is your 7th ECCA session already. So for today, I'll be doing PT. So before we start, I'll conduct a safety briefing as always. So firstly, make sure you have your water bottle with you. At any point in time, if you need to hydrate yourself, please drink up. Secondly, make sure there's no dangerous objects or things around you. For example, tables, chair, glasses that may cause hurt to you. And third, at any point in time, if you don't feel well, make sure you raise your hand in front of your teachers or find your parents, then stop with whatever you're doing. Okay, so for now, we'll start with warm-up and let's go. Before we start with the PT, we're going to do some exercises for warm-up. So the exercises will be jumping jacks, toe touches, high knees, butt kicks, and squats. Okay, we're going to start soon. Uh, go find a space first. Okay, we'll start in 3, 2, 1, and go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, let's go 10 seconds break before we move on to those touches. Okay, if you're feeling tired or anything, please stop. Raise your hand in front of the teachers or your parents. Okay? Okay, we'll start with toe touches. Make sure your toes, your legs are shoulder width apart. Okay, we'll start with toe, raise your hands up first. Okay, we'll do about 20 reps. We'll start in 3, 2, 1, and go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, 10 seconds break before we move on to high knees. Okay, we're going to be 20 reps or so. Just follow my timing, my pace. If you cannot catch up, just do at your own pace. Make sure you complete 20 reps. Okay? Okay, we're going to start in 3, 2, 1, and go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, 10 seconds break before we move on to, uh, to butt kicks. Okay, if you need drink up, Take sips of water. Okay, make sure your heart is pumping and <laughs> drink some water if you really need to. Okay? We're gonna start in 3, 2, 1, and go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, 10 seconds break again. And we move on to the last warm-up exercise, which will be squats. 
Okay, take your deep breath. Breathe. Okay, we're gonna start. In three, two, one, and go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, so that's all for warm up. Take a break first. If you need a drink up, go and drink up, wipe your sweat. Okay, we'll move on to the next exercise. So you have done your warm up, and now we're all pumped up. We're gonna start our exercise. First exercise will be lunches. Okay, we're gonna do 30 seconds. Then after that we go for 20 seconds break. Then we will start our second exercise which is curtsy lunge. Then after curtsy lunge, we will move on to two flexibility stretch which is cat cow and hamstring stretch that you have done in the previous session. Then we will do this for three sets. Then we will move on to the next activity. Okay, so now we're gonna start lunches. Make sure you got ample space around you. Okay. We're going to go for 30 seconds in 3, 2, 1, and go. Okay, so make sure you don't hunch your back, maintain a good posture. If you need support, you can put both your hands on your knee and push yourself up. Good job. 20 seconds. Well, I'm going to do some breathing exercise. If you want to follow me, just follow, okay? Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. Okay, we're going to start our second exercise, curtsy lunge. 3, 2, 1, go. Okay, make sure you go as low as you can. Likewise, if you need support, put your hands on your knees. Okay, this action is actually like how you, how you bow on the legs. This is a left-hander, this is right-hander. Okay, good job. Again, 20 seconds break. Okay, we're gonna do some breathing exercise again. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Okay, now we're gonna do the flexibility stretch. Cat cow, go into your knees, your hands shoulder width apart, and curl. And then make sure you try to bend as much as you can so you have an up at the back. Punch. Make sure you feel your core or your stomach area. Now bend. Feel your lower back. Punch. Okay. Jump. 30 seconds again. You can stretch your arms. Drink water if you need. Okay. If you want to do your breathing exercise, do it on your own pace. I'll give you the cue when we'll do the next stretch. Okay, all back. Let's start with our last 
stretch, which is the hamstring stretch. So make sure you open your legs wide and try to reach for the floor. You don't bend your knees, take note. Make sure you feel the stretch of the back of your leg. If you cannot reach the floor, try your best. Like me. Make sure try to reach for the floor. Okay, good job. So go for the 20 seconds break again and we'll start the next set of four exercises. We're gonna start our exercise. First exercise will be lunges. Okay, we're gonna do 30 seconds. And after that, we go for 20 seconds break. Then we'll start our second exercise, which is curtsy lunge. Then after curtsy lunge, we'll move on to two flexibility stretch, which is cat cow and hamstring stretch that you have done in the previous session. And we'll do this for three sets. And we'll move on to the next activity. Okay, so now we're gonna start lunges. Make sure you got ample space around you, okay? We're gonna go for 30 seconds in three, two, one, and go. Okay, so make sure you don't hunch your back, maintain a good posture. If you need support, if you put both your hands on your knee to push yourself up. Okay, good job. 20 seconds. I'm going to do some breathing exercise. If you want to follow me, just follow, okay? Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. Okay, we're going to start our second exercise, curtsy lunge. Three, two, one, go. Okay, make sure you go as low as you can. Likewise, if you need support, put your hands on your knees. Okay, this action is actually like how you, how you bow on the lanes. This is a left-hander, this right-hander. Okay, good job. Again, 20 seconds break. Then you go do some breathing exercise again. Breathe in. And now. Breathe in. And now. Breathe in. And now. Breathe in. And now. Okay, now we're going to do the flexibility stretch. Cat cow, go into your knees, your hands shoulder width apart, and curl, and then make sure you try to bend as much as you can, so you have an up at the back, punch, make sure you feel your core or your stomach area, now bend, through your lower back. Punch. Okay. Good job. 30 seconds again. You can stretch your arms. Drink water if you need. Okay. If you want to do your breathing exercise, do it on your own pace. I'll give you the cue when we do the next stretch. Okay, all back. Let's start with our last stretch, which is the hamstring stretch. So make sure you open your legs wide and try to reach for the floor. 
Don't, don't bend your knees. Take note. Make sure you feel the stretch on the back of your leg. If you cannot reach the floor, try your best. Like me. Make sure try and reach for the floor. Good job. So, go for the 20 second break again and we'll start the next set of four exercises. We're going to start our exercise. First exercise will be lunges. Okay, we're going to do 30 seconds and after that, we go for 20 seconds break. Then we'll start our second exercise, which is curtsy lunge. And after curtsy lunge, we will move on to two flexibility stretch, which is cat cow and hamstring stretch that you have done in the previous session. Then we will do this for three sets, and we'll move on to the next activity. Okay, so now we're gonna start lunges. Make sure you got ample space around you. Okay, we're gonna go for thirty seconds in three, two, one, and go. Okay, so make sure you don't hunch your back, maintain a good posture. If you need support, you can put both your hands on your knee to push yourself up. Okay, good job. 20 seconds. I'm going to do some breathing exercise. If you want to follow me, just follow, okay? Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. Okay, we're going to start our second exercise, curtsy lunge. Three, two, one, go. Okay, make sure you go as low as you can. Likewise, if you need support, put your hands on your knees. Okay, this action is actually like how you, how you bow on the lanes. This is a left hander, this right hander. Good job. Again, 20 seconds break. Okay, we're going to do some breathing exercise again. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Okay, now we're going to do the flexibility stretch. Get cow, put it to your knees, your hands shoulder width apart, and curl, bend. Make sure you try to bend as much as you can, so you have an up at the back. Punch. Make sure you feel your core or your stomach area. Now bend. Feel your lower back. Punch. Go. Okay. Good job. 30 seconds again. You can stretch your arms. Drink water if you need. Okay. If you want to do your breathing exercise, do it on your own pace. I'll give you the cue when we do the next stretch. Okay, all back. Let's start with our last stretch, which is the hamstring stretch. So make sure you open your legs wide and try to reach for the floor. Okay, don't bend your knees, take note. Make sure you feel 
the stretch of the back of your leg. If you cannot reach the floor, try your best. Like me. Make sure try and reach for the floor. So we have completed our PT for this session. Okay, for the next part of my session will be that I'm going to show you some of the videos that I filmed and I'll be talking about the safety aspects in the bowling center, how you choose your bowling ball or your house bowling ball and also explaining the house rental shoes. Okay, so now you just go and find a place and relax, sit down and enjoy the video. Hi everyone, this is Coach Marcus and I'm from the Agape Bowling Academy. Today I'm going to showcase to you what are the bowling balls you can find in the bowling center. So here, we have displayed some of the balls you can find in the bowling center and they are all in different colors and weight, ranging from 5 pounds to 15 pounds. So what are some of the common mistakes that bowlers uh, get is that they think bowling balls are in kilograms. So it's like 5 kg or 15 kg but they are not. In fact, they are actually in pounds. So please take note of that. So next, what is the golden question in your mind? That will be, what weight should I use? So the answer to your question is that you should not be looking at the weight. Instead, you should be finding the ball that has the correct fit to your thumb and your fingers. So for your thumb, make sure you are able to fully fit into the thumb hole. And for your fingers, make sure you can go in up to the second joint, which is over here. Okay, so now I'm going to share with you some of the common mistakes where bowlers try to find their bowling ball. Number one, half thumb. So there are bowling balls where their thumb hole is very small and you're only able to put half your thumb into thumb hole. So when you do that, you actually may lose the ball and, let, and it will drop behind your, when you're bowling. Okay, so... Please make sure your thumb is able to insert fully into the thumb hole. Number two, loose thumb. So some of the balls in the bowling center will have very big thumb hole and you will actually be able to turn your thumb 360 like you are stirring your, co your morning coffee. So make sure it's just nice, not too loose that you can turn your thumb around. Number three, tight thumb. So there are also some balls in the bowling center that has very small thumb hole and you, are, you try to squeeze your thumb in. Then it will cause you to have a very tight thumb hole and when you bowl, you actually may fly into the lane. So make sure it's not too tight or not too loose. Number four, using of the wrong fingers. So for in bowling, you're, you're supposed to use your middle finger and your ring finger. Some bowlers mistake it as using your index finger and your middle finger. So when you are finding your bowling ball that fits your finger, make sure it's your middle finger and your ring finger. Number five, using putting your finger into the first joint only. So there are bowling balls that have very small finger holes and you are only able to fit your fingers into the first joint. By doing so, when you are bowling, you may actually drop the ball in front and cause the ball to have a very loud boom on the, on the ground. Okay, so make sure you can get a ball that you can fit your fingers up to your second joint. So that's all for the first episode. I hope you get some knowledge about bowling in the bowling center. So to find out more about bowling, please subscribe and like our video and stay tuned for the next video. Bye! Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Let's Go Bowling. Today I'll be showing you the rented shoes that you'll be renting from the bowling center. So you can see in front of me is a pair of rented shoes. And the unique thing about the shoes is that both sides of the shoe are slidable. This is to actually cater for both left handers and right handers. But when you are bowling, you actually feel a little bit slippery. But nonetheless, you still have fun with your family and your friends. Okay, 
So now I'm going to bring you to the bowling lanes and I'll show you some of the safety aspects that you need to take note of when you're bowling. Okay, so let's go. So now we're at the bowling lanes. This is actually the bowler's area before you step up to bowl. Okay, when you're in the bowler's area, there is actually chairs, ta tables for you to relax and chill before you step up to bowl. One of the safety aspects you need to take note over here is that you should not be consuming your food or your beverages inside the bowler's area. If you'd like to do so, please make sure you walk outside of the bowler's area over this table to consume your food or drinks. Okay, so next we'll move on. Here is actually the console where you can key in your names, look at your scores and compare and be competitive with your friends and family. Okay, next is actually the, the approach or also the bowling lanes. Over here, you've got the ball return where the balls will be pushed back from the bowling lanes after you throw the ball. This is actually where the ball will come out from after throwing the ball and you must make sure that you do not put your hands inside the, 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 uh, the ball return because the machine is actually running. You may actually cut yourself if you put your hand inside. Okay. Next, we'll actually move on to the foul line. The foul line is actually the line over here before you throw your ball. So make sure you don't cross over the foul line because there's a lot of oil and it's very slippery, you may actually slip and fall. Make sure you land before the line at the dots area and then make your shot. Okay? Next, actually there's a, a lot of facili uh, facility and items you can use for kids. If your kids need uh, bumpers, they provide bumpers for you. So you have to actually inform the counter so they're on the bumpers and the balls won't go into the gutter. Okay, the next thing we would like to show you is that most of the bowling center has this very fun device. Actually, it's for kids to use. They can actually put up the ball over here and then you just push it and the ball will go around the lane. So I'm going to show it to you. Okay, so this is actually a very, very fun tool for kids to use when they are bowling. So now we have come to the end of the second episode and please like and subscribe to our channel, share this video, and I'll see you in the next episode. Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Let's Go Bowling. As you can see, today I got my own bowling shoes on. Uh, I do not need to rent the shoes from the bowling center. And I also picked up my own house ball. So if you're not aware of the bowling lanes feature or how to pick your own house ball, please click the video link above. That you can watch episode 1 and 2 where I'll share with you some knowledge on doing so. Okay? Okay, so for today, I'll be sharing with you some tips on bowling so you can improve your score and also maybe even win your inter department games or your inter school games. Okay, so now we are at the arrow zone of the bowling lane. From the foul line to the arrow zone is about 15 feet and the entire lane, the length of the entire lane is 60 feet long. So it's easier to aim at the arrow zone, which is only 15 feet as compared to looking at the pins down lane, which is about 60 feet. Okay, so some background knowledge about the bowling lane is that it's made out of 39 boards. Each arrow is a multiple of 5 boards. So for example, the first arrow over here is 5 board, second arrow, 10 board, third arrow, 15 board, and the middle arrow or the center arrow is 20th board. So for right-handers, usually we will aim at the third arrow from the right and the left-handers, the third arrow from the left to get an optimal chance of striking at the back. So now with this knowledge, let's start bowling. Okay, so for the first tip that I'll be sharing with you today, is to have a good finishing position. What I mean by a good finishing position, so for right-handers, make sure you place your left foot in front. For left-handers, place your right foot in front. So I'll be demonstrating the right-handers version. So when you're going to bowl, make sure you put your left foot in front. Afterwards, put your, left, uh, your right leg behind. And then have a slight knee bend. After that, make sure your non-bowling arm, which is your left arm, raise it up, maintain the position, and at the point of release, make sure you point your thumb forward at the target, which is the third arrow. 
point forward and follow through. So this will be the motion. So what I actually did there was actually aiming at the third arrow, uh, which is also the 15 board. So we are actually pointing my thumb forward and follow through the uh, 15 board. So where I'm trying to aim and hit is actually pin one and pin three in between of them. And instead, not pin one head on. So we don't aim pin one because there's a high chance of getting a split. Instead, we aim in between pin one and pin three, which you will have a higher probability of getting a strike. So for the third tip that I'll be sharing with you, it'll be sparing. So imagine you have left a pin that is on the right side of the lane, for example pin 10. What, we, what you should do is stand on the left side of the lane using the fourth arrow or the center arrow as your target and attempting to spare the right side pin. So for pins that are on the left side, you will stand on the right side of the lane. Not the left side, but the right side. And aim at the same arrows, which is the fourth arrow or the middle arrow. And attempt your spare, for example, pin 7. So this is actually how you spare pins on the left and on the right. So we have come to the end of the episode. So I hope you have learned something and gained some knowledge about bowling. And maybe you can try it out and maybe get even higher scores with your friends. So please remember to like and share this video, subscribe to our channel. And in the next video, we'll be actually sharing more in-depth tips of how you can be better in bowling. So stay tuned and I'll see you next week. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something new. And okay, so now this is the end of my part in this session. I'll hand over to Coach Jimmy where he will share with you more bowling information. And I'll see you in the next session.